let me ask you this important question. Why are you learning or doing marketing? What's the purpose of your marketing activities? You might say, George, that's obvious. I am learning marketing so that I can get clients, so that I can get some sales, some more customers in my business. I said, okay, you're going to get customers for your business? Good. So what happens after you get customers or clients? Well, then I can serve them with my gift, my talent, my skills, uh, hopefully a skill or talent that I enjoy providing and see their fulfillment and feel like I'm on a path of purpose. I'm hoping <laughs> you might say something like that. I'm, I'm guessing that the fact that you're watching my videos probably means that this resonates with you. So the problem of taking, going from I'm doing marketing to so I can get clients, and then eventually I can do work that is fulfilling and of service to others and helping the world move forward is that this part of it, the, the first part, do marketing so I can get clients, has become so myopically focused by so many small business owners, solopreneurs, that they get sucked in, maybe you have as well, they get sucked in easily to people who are selling you on make six figures, get a million followers, you know, just follow the system. You're going to have clients for the rest of your life. And what happens? Well, you buy their expensive program. Maybe it starts off with a $97 product and then a $297 product and then $597 product. Right? They're using persuasion or um, psychological pricing on you already. And that should be a trigger for hmm, wonder what's going on here. And then $2,000 product and then on and on and on, you know, mastermind, $10,000 mastermind. What's going on here is that they are making millions of dollars by um, short-circuiting your values. Essentially, what you actually want is to be able to express your creativity, to feel in service, in genuine service to humanity, to experience the fulfillment of watching others benefit, grow, transform, heal, you know, because of your effort. That's what you, that's what you want. But when you follow the marketing of most of the experts I've seen out there, they are so hyper-focused, fixated on that first segment of do marketing to get clients that it's kind of like you're saying, I'm eating so I can get calories. <laughs> That's all. Or, um, you know, I am, I am exercising so that I, I can get muscles. That's a little bit better. Okay. Hopefully you're exercising or eating because you enjoy some of it or that you wish for a more well-being and more vibrancy in your body, mind, uh, heart rather than just the myopic focus on that immediate measurable outcome and the result. So much goes wrong when you focus on just the short-term immediate, immediate measurable metric. And that's what so much of people's businesses have become. Some of you watching this may have almost thrown in the towel and it's like, I, I can't do this business thing because I just, the, the stuff I have to do for marketing feels not aligned with my authenticity. It feels pushy. It feels like not purposeful while well, I'm talking to you because that was me years ago when I started learning doing marketing is it was all about the short-term metric of well, you 
you, you send this type of email that's cleverly copywritten to manipulate the reader into doing something, to, to, to press that call to action button or to buy the product or to sign up for your webinar or whatever. You, you send this cleverly written email to, and that hyper focus becomes where our energy and attention goes much of our working day, you know, when we're working on our marketing. And we lose touch with the actual purposeful, deeper values and the higher purpose of why we're doing it in the first place. And I'll tell you why I started talking about this years ago and I'm still talking about it today because, well, I need the reminder myself and perhaps you do as well, that if you can shift your focus from this uber short-term metric-based I do this marketing thing and this marketing action, and then I'll get this many likes and this much engagement. And then, you know, da, 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 and then I'll, I'll be fulfilled in my heart and soul. I'll have found, I'll, I'll be living my purpose. If you can get out of that short-term focus and just widen your view more towards what you really want, then you will see that your marketing actions and efforts can itself be deeply meaningful, deeply purposeful. Because let me explain. Instead of marketing so I can get, you know, likes, followers, opt-ins, signups, clients, right? Instead of that, why don't we just jump to I'm marketing so that I can feel fulfilled in service to humanity and growing my heart and soul <laughs> and, and growing my skills and my character. What, what, what if, could we possibly make that jump? Because what's amazing about this, and I've been doing this now, I've been in marketing for 14 years full-time and I've, I've been making this transition for the last 10 years or so. This, this shift of this short-term focus all the way down to the the true end goal the the deeper values the higher purpose the the deep the the end goal that we actually want not the so what if you get likes and followers I and mean, that's not really why you're why you're here on earth if you get likes and followers right so what even if you get clients it could could be bad clients for all you know it could be clients that you really dislike working with I don't know but really you want to do the work that grows you as a person uh, and practices your creativity, it allows you to expand into more of your whole authentic expression. That's really what you want, right? I, I'm guessing that's why you're here. So if when we do marketing to practice that end game, that deeper purpose, that, high, that's that deeper values and the higher purpose, when we, when we do marketing from there, what happens is magically the middle part tends to get fulfilled as well. When you do your marketing as an act of creativity fitness so that you can grow into more of your authentic expression and your marketing also is in service to humanity, regardless of why they, whether they buy. See, that's the thing. When you're working from a deeper value set, you're not saying, well, you better, this better happen and that better happen. Otherwise, what's the point? No, no. The point is to practice the deeper value set. That's the point. The point is to embody and express love and truth and courage and compassion and a heart of service. Like that is. The, the, the point. And if that is the point, then how will your marketing be different? Really? Because some of you are following marketing tactics and strategies that you said, if, if money were no issue, if I had all the money in the world, and, and if also, if clients were no issue, if I had, if I had unlimited clients, right? And, you know, and then how would I do marketing? He said, I wouldn't do marketing at all. Okay, well, that's fine. But you still would want to express yourself and try to help humanity, wouldn't you? 
if you had all your needs met, right, physically speaking, you would be bored unless you were doing some kind of service to the world. I know you. I mean, that's that's why I'd be, if, if that's not you, then I'm sorry. <laughs> we're probably not the right fit. You go watch other videos. That's fine. I, I, I wish you well. But many of you here are saying, yeah, if I if all my needs were met, I would want to use my invest my precious life energy and time and efforts to grow myself while being in service to others. Like that is the magical place to feel more and more authentically powerful as your soul highest soul self while you are in service to the greater whole like wow yes that's that's what motivates you deeply it's not the oh my god i got more likes sure that might be kind of dopamine hit kind of fun kind of like maybe even a little bit you know vulnerable as you get more followers and get more likes and get more you know, and oh, you got a client that might be might make you feel hopeful financially, uh, uh, but also the the ability, the, the opportunity to do what's really at the end, which is your calling, your true livelihood. Like that's really what you want. So when you're following most marketing strategies, and they're so focused on this, and you 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 know when they sell you they sell you their program, they're talking about make six figures make seven figures or eight figures, whatever, or get lots of followers or, you know, uh, use this turnkey system and you have clients for the rest of your life. It's just, again, it's so myopically focused. And you know, when you start using their systems that your heart is not in it and you feel your conscience is saying something is not quite right about the system, this situation. So I let allow me therefore to share with you the way that i have found that is so much more fulfilling for me and for many of my clients authentic marketing that's what i call it you can call it however you want to some people call it you know heart led business uh some people call it no well, sometimes i call it um marketing as ministry or marketing as an act of service and growth. And that is, that's the point is you do marketing because you see the opportunity to grow yourself while being in service to humanity. That is the most amazing marketing. How? Well, because for example, there are essentially, okay, I'll tell you this. There are essentially two arms of marketing. Okay. That you're going to have to do if you're going to, get clients and do your heart work, heart's, heart's calling, your heart's song. There's content and then there's offerings. Like marketing has to have both of these, right? Content is a little easier for me to explain to you, which is when you see marketing as an act of service and you know, with the result of growing yourself, then content is that. You, you, when you're content, you're simply showing up to say, how can I be of inspiration? And how can I shift, help to shift my audience's mind and heart just a little bit today in a positive direction? Like that's content, you see. However you do it, whether it's writing or whether it's... Um, you know, uh, videos or whether it's podcasts. And uh, I just have to take a quick pause and show you something on the screen here. Those of you who are watching, oh, let me, let me turn off the, uh, let me turn off the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. You can't even see that, can you? Oh, not now you can. My dog is rubbing against something. Buddy, buddy, that's enough. Okay, good boy. <laughs> okay. All right, got to blur the, blur the background. All right, so. Uh, that that's partly what brings me joy is these days when I make videos, I get to see my, 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 my new yard and, and my, my dog. Anyway, so content and offerings, right? Content, a little easier to understand how it is. 
an act of creativity, fitness in service to humanity. And when you do it that way, like I'm not thinking, God, this this video better get this many likes or or you know this many comments. Otherwise, you know, th- th- what's the point of making this video? Like that is something I hear from people, um, clients. Well, hopefully they I've shifted their value set. They're not shifted to help them embody the value set more. But I hear from cl- from colleagues and it's like it's like George, what's the point of content? You know, what's the, I'm like point of content? What about growth and service? What do you mean? What do you mean the point of content? No, but you know, I'm making money and like that happens in the that happens as a natural byproduct of growth and service. It's not, it's not, you know, you 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 create if you if you if you are passionate about growing yourself in service to humanity, then and you see the oh my god, content is an opportunity for that. It's so such a clear opportunity because when you're creating, when you're writing, recording, when you're um, you know, sharing ideas, you are growing. Like how do you how do you clarify your mind and your soul by expressing by practicing the expression of your voice and of your soul? Like that's how you grow. Like in terms of your thoughts and your your embodiment of your um, ideas, right? So your content you 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 express and the expression probably will help somebody down the road. It might not be in the very moment you post it. It could be. 10 days from now, or it could be 10 years from now. You know, I've I've frequently gotten people who have watched videos from years ago and said, my gosh, that video was, was, was really helpful for me. I'm like, great. I made this in 2015 or something, you know? And so content is a little easier to understand how it can reach the end. But what about offerings? When you, you know, I mean, you, if you want to get clients, if you want to make money, you know, you need to sell something. Right, you need, you need to sell. So, how can offerings rather than well, I'm gonna, I'm making an offering so I can get clients. Well, yes, obviously that 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 you know that happens over time, but how can offerings itself be growth and an act of service? Let me explain. When you make an offering, when you sell a product or a service, and you can notice, I sell frequently. I sell every Wednesday on my Facebook business page. Most Wednesdays, not every Wednesday. I usually take about a, a week off per month, sometimes two weeks off per month selling. But most Wednesdays, you go to my Facebook business page, facebook.com slash George Cal Community, and you will see that I'm selling something or I'm pre-selling something, getting ready to sell something. And I see that as an act of service and growth as well. How? Because the most perfect product for you to sell is the sweet spot between what you love and what the market loves, what other people love, because your money comes from other people's spending. Without other people spending money with you, you have no income, right? So that intersection of what you love, what you think, oh, I would love to provide the service or this product, it would, it would be enjoyable for me, plus what the market wants from you, that sweet spot, not only do you make sales, but you also feel fulfilled in your work. And the offerings is the effort of, of, of getting there, the effort, the practice of test, you know, testing the market uh, before that of market research conversations, and then of finally testing the market, humbly offering them, hey, this is what I come up, came up with in terms of what I believe is that sweet spot between what I love and what you love. What do you think? What do you think about this? Right? And, and you might have not gotten it right, and that helps you practice patience and forbearance of yourself and others and curiosity and um, perseverance of, well, let me bounce back from this failed market test. It's just a, one test. Let me, let me bounce back from that and let me try again, right? So even the offering itself is a practice of personal development as well as service to others. Because when, when it's a great product, they buy it. They love it. They're so grateful that they heard about you and that they bought the, they, that they spent the money with you. So I hope this is clearer about how we shift from typically how you're going to learn marketing out there. So myopically focused on either engagement metrics or numbers of followers or numbers of clients you get, numbers of opt-ins. And that dries out the soul. That removes the heart and the deeper juice, the deeper spiritual fire 
that is possible when you bring that to your marketing because you're focused on the bigger picture, then not only do you feel fulfilled in your marketing, the marketing itself is a, is a worthwhile act. Not only do you feel fulfilled, you also, along the way, people trust you because they see how you're doing your marketing. And with trust comes greater reach. And with trust also comes greater alignment as you talk with them and understand them better. You can align naturally your content and your offerings to what they want. And if you are selling what they want, you're posting what they want, it's not a surprise that they will respond. So I hope this is helpful. May you find that connection to your deeper values in your marketing, so-called marketing efforts, and therefore see the opportunity of showing up regularly, consistently to fulfill that soulful practice. And in that constant practice comes the natural byproduct of the response and the reciprocity from the market. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I wish you well. I wish you joyful productivity.